Chriselle, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Um, your book, your book starts off. We learn about your childhood, and I can't help but think like where you grew up, how you grew up, is like totally different from where you are right now. They couldn't be more different. That is correct. Yes, it's been quite the journey, Ted. <laughs> yeah. So you were you were homeless, based homeless, kind of moving around as a child. Um, and that kind of got you to be resilient and scrappy and, and kind of tell us about that. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, you know, we growing up, you know, we had, you know, we lived in a family where, you know, my dad was a mechanic. It's a small town. There's only so much business. Um, and my mom, you know, she would always try and find odd jobs and, you know, they dealt with other things that I get into in the book that are, you know, that had, you know, that we had some odds stacked against us. It wasn't just money. And, you know, so it was tough and we're always, you know, whether we're couch surfing at, you know, a, a cousin's house or we're, you know, getting those eviction notices and, you know, in a car or figuring it out. That's something that I, you know, some people know from a little tidbit on Selling Sunset, but it was kind of nice to kind of tell the whole story, but in a, in a way that, you know, hopefully people are able to see, you know, that they, it, it did create a resilience in me and it did kind of make me have to, you know, be really, um, you know, find that place where it's like, okay, this is my life right now, but it's not going to be my life. Now, granted, I didn't know how big it was going to go. I had no idea, but um, it definitely was quite the journey of just like in my head thinking, okay, you know, I would watch these soaps with my, with my family. They, and, and I would just idolize these women. And I just saw this glamorous life outside of everything I ever saw my world to be. And I just wanted to be in that life. And so I just, you know, made a plan. Okay. This is what I want to do. And I really stuck with it. And uh, that's interesting. Cause, cause in the book you say, you, so you grew up watching soaps and soaps was, that was the goal. Oh Yeah. So that, I mean, that was, that's so funny because it's one of those things where, you know, I, people ask me if, you know, the, what I've achieved has exceeded my goals. And, and it did at a, at a very early age, because, you know, that was my goal. I really wanted to be on a soap and make my family proud. And, you know, and because that happened so soon after I graduated college and came out, you know, and um, booked all my children, it, it, but then, you know, life is full of ups and downs. And then, you know, at some point, you know, I'm, I'm doing that and that's the whole career path I thought I had, but then you get, you know, you, you I got fired from days of our lives, not from anything other than, you know, the storyline just changes. And all of a sudden it's like, I, I, I get scared. Like, I don't want my life to go back to what it was. I can't, you know, what am I going to do? Because when you're auditioning, you're not in charge of when you work. And so that's why I got my real estate license. And I think that's a great lesson is that, you know, sometimes when something feels devastating or like the end of the world, it actually pushes you to places that you wouldn't have gone if you were comfortable. And so I, you know, that's one of the things that I like sharing, you know, I would have never gotten my real estate license if I hadn't gotten fired from what I thought was my ultimate dream job. Right, right. And, and you say it in the book, but you were a real estate agent before selling Sunset, and then they cut, they brought you in for the show. Um, but you but you have become really good friends with all these people that are on the show, right? Are yeah. you surprised by how you guys all just melded together? You know, I am because I remember, you know, in season one, kind of coming in thinking that, you know, just like any TV job, you know, you you might connect with a couple people, but I was in a different place in my life. You know, I. I was, you know, driving from the valley, you know, kind of showing up to work and then going home and it was just, um, and then, you know, kind of losing everything that I knew that was my personal life and, and really just bonding with the people that, you know, are there for you when times are really hard. It's, you know, now I feel like we are family. I mean, there's such a, you know, a group of us that, you know, these, there's so many things that are amazing that aren't on camera all the time that, you know, we're just, some of us are like sisters at this point. Right, right. Um, people probably think this is like, this is their biggest quote. Is the drama real? <laughs> okay, so I have, I mean, as much as I would love to say that it's not because I love soaps and I love playing the drama, 
in real life, it's different. You know, you have to take this stuff home with you and it makes it uh, stressful and uh, there's a lot of anxiety with that. And so it it is real. I think that, you know, you can kind of see by the way that things have happened when the cameras are off and we, we have to talk about things that, you know, it's, it's, it's real. Um, unfortunately, you know, now I'm hoping that, you know, it's hard. We're all getting to a place where, you know, the show is such a success. It's such a gift to our business and to everything. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, enough time has passed that we can kind of, you know, even for the viewer's sake, it's, I watch reality TV. It's, it doesn't get fun when you kind of get stuck on these things. So a lot of time has passed. We filmed four and five together. Mm -hmm. Um, but hopefully when we, you know, in the future, when we go to film, I'm hoping that, you know, we can kind of try and re- you know, what's the word reset everything, right. but yeah, the drama has been real and it's been a process of trying to, to figure out that balance of, okay, we are stuck together guys. Like we need to figure this out. Right. And you say it in the book, um, that what people see in terms of the houses and how big they are and, you know, um, you know, multi, multi, multi million dollar homes, you basically acknowledge, okay, this isn't the reality for you folks out there. Why do you want people to kind of look at this not as like, this is what you necessarily, like this, is, this isn't reality? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I mean, some of these homes that I'm selling, that I'm telling people are so amazing. They're homes that if, if were given to me, I would sell it. It's just, you know, some of these feel like malls, you know, at, at night when I come in to, you know, open the home up. It, that's not what I personally look for in a home, but I get it. Like, that's fun to watch. And we want to see these, you know, and some people, you know, they really like that, but I don't think that is the goal or the dream necessarily. I think home is more, you know, what you make of it and somewhere that you feel safe and comfortable and just kind of like doing your own twist on something. Like even if it's small, there are little things that you can do that really can open your eyes to the space that you're just kind of used to. And I've learned a lot of that through being in real estate where, you know, before I was, you know, just always, you know, I was going from apartment to apartment and I didn't want to have to repaint if I changed something. And so being able to finally get to that point where I got to, you know, make my own decisions and buy a home. I just know that, you know, this is something that, you know, that's kind of the dream to be able to buy your home. And um, I don't think it needs to be the homes that you see on Selling Sunset, obviously. But um, I just think, you know, especially when you feel like you're investing in yourself as opposed to, you know, who cares about, you know, labels or the shiny stuff or whatever. But if it's something that you, for me, especially coming from the background, I did something about owning your own home and, and, and really feeling that home security. It was, you know, it's really important. And I know that is important for a lot of people. Uh, so your, your love life has been kind of in the tabloids a little bit. Uh, you put it in the book, uh, but what I didn't know was that you were going to be the bachelorette. I was, I know that's so, um, it's funny because it's something I'd never talked about. And actually one of the executive producers on a podcast um, came out with it. And so that made me in so much time has passed. And um, it was funny because I was writing the book. I was like, oh, I can include that because I didn't know how these things go if that's, um, but yes, I was actually uh, scheduled. I was on all my children at the time. They were going to do like a cross promotion type of thing. They approached me about it. Um, I was in a place in my life where I was like, okay, sure, let's do it. And we were all set to, to do it. It was completely ready to go. I had my, you know, date that I was going to show up. And then all of a sudden, Brad didn't, it was the season that Brad didn't pick someone. It never happened before. Yeah. And that just really kind of changed the scope. And obviously I'm so, you know, things happen the way they're supposed to. And um, little did I know that uh, regardless of that outcome, my love life was still going to be, still going <laughs> to destined to be uh in the in the front but um yeah that's just like a funny little tidbit did you watch that season and then go okay here's who I would have had in my you know top five top four top three I did yeah I, you know of course I was watching and um you know I think I was 26 or 27 at the time so you know, looking back on it, it's all for the best. I, I really highly doubt I would have found my soulmate in, in that group. Um, but I know that I wouldn't have, but I did watch it and um, it was interesting to watch. Uh, would you ever go back to soaps? 
Oh, hundred percent. I love soaps. Um, you know, I, I went back um, not too long ago, I think um, last year and, and got to play because my character's dead, but they brought me back as my brother's, you know, guilty conscience that he sees, you know, and I get to basically come back from the dead. It's so much fun. They're like family to me. And um, so, yeah, I would never say no to anything like that. That's my first love. And I just have so much fun with it. Um, and uh, under construction, what, what was it like writing this book? Because I imagine it's just like, where do I even begin? And it's just like, you look at it and you're like, okay, I guess I'm just going to start. Oh, for sure. And I, I mean, I think that was the scariest part is finding the structure and I actually worked with Dina Gockman on this and she, because I really wanted this story to be mine and I knew it wouldn't work if I didn't write it, but I need, I, she was amazing at guiding me and helping me structure everything and giving me, okay, this is the story, you know, right. You know, let's tell this story, you know, and she kind of helped focus me. And so that helped a lot. Um, but it was, it was overwhelming in the beginning, just because where do you start? Where do you end? What do you, and so actually as I was needing to get the last chapter in by my deadline, he, I had just closed on my home. I was in this house and it just, it was so kismet that I started the book in COVID lockdown is a cathartic kind of thing. Then I got, you know, approached to write a book and I, you know, and then all of a sudden, all of that change happened in the space that I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. and I ended it at my new house. Um, so it was, you know, so you'll, I get to, you know, share that journey. And it was a uh, really amazing. Cause like I said, sometimes those moments that you think are the worst will end up right. being the blessing that gets you to where you know you're you're happiest do we, are we gonna get a sequel oh my gosh you know what i have to say this book was so much work and i did put my heart and soul into it but maybe after all this is done and i get a, another chance to kind of you know sure. sit and reflect but um right now I, i'm just like i they don't i really didn't know how much work goes into you know it's because you also want it to be great and you want to you know so every single time i'm like oh i need to change this and i you know so maybe down the line yes sure minnesota in february what were you thinking i know <laughs> Well, it will be inside, but yeah, I know I did. It's not going to be the greatest weather, but I live in Los Angeles. So, you know, for me to pop in and out of bad weather, you know, even when I go visit my family in Kentucky or St. Louis, um, it, it doesn't bother me to pop in and out, but to live in that weather would be kind of hard. If you saw, if I could turn my camera around and you could see what I'm looking at, um, I would not Don't do it. Well, <laughs> It was minus 15 on my drive into work yesterday. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yikes. Yeah, that's tough. But that doesn't feel much different from like my like 10. So 10 to like minus 50. It all it's just all cold. Yeah, we we something happens when you're here, your blood thins or something because everyone's like, you're not from here. So why, you know, and it'll be 60 degrees and we all have coats on. We're ridiculous. <laughs> Well, good luck with the book. I read it. I thought it was great. Um, so, so, and big fan of Selling Sunset. Oh, one final question. So my, my boss, executive producer, Jeff, he loves Selling Sunset because of Christine. What does that say about Jeff? Oh, well, I, I mean, I, I love I mean, she brings such a fun flair for the clothes. And of course, you know, she brings the drama and, you know, that's what half of what people love watching the show for. So whether, you know, we have our own personal stuff going on, I'll always be the first person to give her mad respect for the fact that she makes for great television. She's sure. an important part of the show. And I think that, you know, we definitely can all agree on that. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. It was lovely talking to you. Nice talking to you. Safe travels. Thank you.